Narayanam Namasitam Naram Cheva Narutamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayo Diret Nashta Prayashu Padjaisu Nityam Bhagata Sevya Bhagati Yatamashuki Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki Nikama Kaupadur Garitam Param Shukama Karamita Javi Samitam Pivata Bhagatam Rashamariam Mahora Hori Sikubu Vivakaham Krishna Sadam Pagate Damagyan Vahe Karona Stadi Samisha Parana Koduna Ditaham Kama Pia Sutta Dabito Vishuddha Samyapiri and Evidam Beruk Saram Prakahi Duho Mahorata Dham Sam Klesha Nirvana Musanti Nanyatam Om Magana Timananda Syang Ganangana Sadakya Taksuru and Miritam Yanatash Mahi Sri Guru Venama Sri Chaitanya Manu Vistam Stabitam Yanabhutare Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dharati Swaparantikam Vandaham Sri Guru Siyata Parakamanam Sri Guru and Vaishnavam Stav Sri Rupam Sagatatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Stam Sadevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Paran Sahagana Larita Shivishikhan Vitam Stam Nama Om Vishnu Paraya Krishna Pastaya Bhutare Srimadhi Bhakti Varanta Sami Tinamani Namaste Sari Sati Devi Guravani Vatani Nivishes Sanyuri Praskita Deya Sadani Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Giradha Shiva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. Thanks for joining us, Ram Kishore. Jimmy, Taruni, I'll give you guys a like there. No, why should I just give you a like? I love you. Let's change those likes to loves, those thumbs up to hearts. Govinda Dave, Hari Bo, Jean, you got a big heart there. All right, four comments, and we haven't even said anything. <laughs> Chris, thanks for joining us also. <clears throat> As we all know, it is Motivational Monday. Uh, start of a new week. The middle of this week, we're going to celebrate Nityananda Trayodishi. That's coming up this Wednesday. There are lots and lots of special programs all over the internet about Lord Nityananda. As far as I am concerned, I might have to refer you to one of those other programs because Tuesday, uh, I have to go in for cataract surgery and never having had cataract surgery before. I can't say what I'm going to be like on Wednesday. People tell me it's no big deal, but uh, I may or may not be able to jump back on on Wednesday. I have to spend the night in Salt Lake City in order to go to a follow-up meeting on uh, on Wednesday to see how the surgery went, check up um, for any uh, negative uh, uh, vibe what is that symptoms and that negative effects but pretty routine overall and after all so much of what i do depends on my eyes being able to read and make notes and study and maintain eye contact with you after all the rap song would nearly would not nearly have its impact should i not be able to see you very clearly when i look into your eyes i see a shining soul when i look into your eyes i see a spirit soul See a soul that's never born, a spark and never dies, yearns to fly back home, back to the spiritual skies. From dust we come, to dust we go, was not spoken of the soul. This body, like a set of clothes, wears out and gets disposed. Flame of light and love gives life to machine. Candle never snuffs, subtle, sublime, unseen. So I'm going to get the cataract out of my left eye so that we can see each other more soul to soul without any obscuration in between us, if that's indeed a word. So I'll be with you today and tomorrow, right after our show tomorrow, I'll jump in the car and run up to Hoops Vision in Salt Lake City. And the surgeon is going to do the operation. His name is Ben. He's, he came to the temple way back when he was a student at BYU, I think it was, with his wife. He has a great appreciation. When he learned that I was a devotee, he just lit up. And you know how dedicated he is to his craft? This is, I'll share this with you. It's an amazing story. We were sitting there, and we, and we scheduled a date for the surgery, which, again, is tomorrow. <clears throat> and he said, he said one time he was out on a river in southern Utah with his best friends. They were fishing. The water was crystal clear. The sky was cloudless and beautiful. Everything glistened and bright. The conversation was brilliant. Um, there was... Nothing that was in any way a blemish on the day. It's one of those perfect days spent out in nature with your best friends. 
and he, he confided in me. I don't know if he tells all his patients this, but I'll tell you one thing. He, he was warm, but he even warmed up more when he learned I was a Hare Krishna. So at this moment, right, in this idyllic moment, he confides in me. He says, Chris, he says, the thought that came to me at that moment, would I, would I, which would I rather be here fishing on a perfect, beautiful day in southern Utah with my friends enjoying dazzling conversation or doing cataract surgery? And he said, I couldn't pick one or the other for sure. And I thought, man, I'm going to trust this guy with my left eye. I mean, if I have to do it, there's probably nobody in the world that's more dedicated. I mean, I have my own anointing, which is obviously communication, public speaking. Um, other people have their own anointings. God doesn't make any two of us the same. He doesn't do carbon copies. There are millions of abilities and people are anointed in different ways. And I believe I found the guy who is anointed, whose passion in life is to do eye surgery. So don't you guys worry about me. I'm going to be in good hands. And my anticipation is that Wednesday morning I'll be just fine and chipper. But I will be in Salt Lake City. I will have my laptop. I haven't done a Zoom call on my laptop and yada, yada, yada. So I'm just hedging my bets here. We'll be here today. Motivational Monday, Transcendental Tuesday, Wisdom Wednesday. Don't want to make promises that I may not be able to keep. Good morning, Rupa Manjari. Good morning, Raleigh. Thanks to all of you for jumping in. We had a great session Saturday and Sunday. If you haven't caught the talk yet, um, go to Facebook or YouTube called The Joy of Devotional Service. We had a wonderful time. I ran across one example, which was so uh, inspiring. It runs, chills up and down my spine. Heard about uh, someone who went to London. They visited Buckingham Palace and they asked a couple of policemen outside, is the king in? And, they, and the policeman said, um, not right now. But the way you can tell is you look above the palace and if the flag of England is flying at high mast, that means the king is sitting, the queen, sorry, is seated, sitting on her throne. And I thought, when Krishna is sitting on the throne of our heart in the palace of our body, do you know what the flag that should always be flying is? It should be joy. It should be joy. If you're in the presence of the Lord, you're in the presence of Ananda Maya Vyasa. You're in the presence of the original reservoir of all pleasure. And if you're in the presence of the Lord, chanting his holy names in the presence of devotees, in the presence of the temple, in the presence of Prashadam, and you're not feeling that ecstasy, and I tell you, there's a leak. There's a leak in your bhakti. There's a leak in your devotional service. One of the ten offenses is rearing up its ugly heads. Otherwise, if you're in the presence of the Lord, you cannot but feel joy. Joy is the flag that you fly above your head. There's so many people, religious people, they go around sour, like they just bit a lemon, critical of everybody. Nothing good to say. There are pure devotees. Everybody else falls short of the mark. And all they do is sit in front of their computer and cast dispersions, and make innuendos, innuendos at people. Uh, Rob's jumping on. Let me do here. Let me let Rob in. Uh, so if you're truly in touch with the Lord, then you'll exhibit joy. Such dour, unsmiling, judgmental, critical people claim to be in touch with the Lord. And if that were the case, they should have notified their face. First thing that happens when you're in touch with the Lord is that you, your joy gets switched on. You go around with a smiling face, being good to people. You're a light that shines. You have something that people want. So that's the flag that we fly above the palace of our bodies when the Lord sits on the throne of our hearts. Thanks, Justin, for jumping on, and thanks for wishing me good luck tomorrow. As I said, I feel pretty confident, not in the least bit nourished, nourished worried because I'm in excellent hands. Okay, so not one other thing I need to share with you here is 
I watch Wisdom of the Sages more and more because Rob has inspired me to do so. And it's interesting their format because they they read several verses of the Bhagavatam in the course of 45 minutes or so. Now, I'm going to t announce to you this morning that we're going back to the same verse for the sixth time. It's the 13th verse in the fourth chapter, first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I just don't want to leave it. There's still nectar there. We're like the bee. Atavasya Padam Bojo Makaram says that one who tastes the honey of the lotus feet of Krishna never, never can go back to material pleasures. And having tasted that honey, he wants to taste it again and again and again and again. So uh, unlike uh, Raghunath and Kastuba, who are doing a magnificent job, I love their format. I love everything about it. But uh, I just, I'm just, I just want to squeeze as much nectar out of each and every verse. Someone may say, well, true, there's 18,000 verses. You're not going to finish in the next 100 lifetimes. It's okay. I don't really mind. Honey is honey, whether you get it from this flower or that flower. So we're going back for another dip in the same verse. This is our sixth visitation. And the verse isn't even one of those classic verses that Prabhupada quotes all the time. But it's still Srimad Bhagavatam. It's still non different than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's still the spiritual world. So let's go back now and revisit this verse from the first canto, fourth chapter, 13th verse. Ya sarvam na samachakshra pristu yam iha kinchana manya tam vishaya bacham shnatam anya chachandaja. Again, Sadaka heading up the sages at Namasharanya is welcoming the arrival. He's welcoming Sudha Goswami. He's arriving fresh from the assembly on the banks of the Yamuna River, where Maharaj Parikshit held a seven-day vigil, vigil at the end of his life and asked questions and received the answers from Sukadeva Goswami. We know that you, Sudha Goswami, are expert in the meaning of all subjects except some portions of the Vedas, and thus you can clearly explain the answers to all the questions we have just put to you. So what's unique about this verse? What's What's so important that we're coming back for the sixth time? The importance is that even though Sudha Goswami may not come up to the mark of certain fruitive workers, may not come up to the mark, he has no possessions, he's homeless, he would be looked down upon by most people who have a house, who have a mortgage, who have one or two cars, who have a bunch of kids. He would, they would be thinking that he's missing the nectar of life, he's missing the honey. The honey is within these four walls with this wife and these kids and that car in the garage and that job I go to every day and the money that I make. Money is the honey. So the materialistic fruit of work would think that not only is Sutta Goswami fall short of the standard of material acquisition, but he's totally bankrupt in the area. Whereas Sutta Goswami would look on them and think of them as totally devoid of any of the kinds of assets that really matter, spiritual assets. But let's say he falls short of the standards of the fruit of worker, which is to jump into the rat race, keep up with the Joneses, look to each side and compare yourself with your friends and your co-workers and see how you're doing. And then, of course, whoever dies with the most toys wins. Congratulations. You get to Take another birth, be packed up in the womb for another nine months, be stifled, be hot, be uncomfortable, be bitten by little worms and parasites, to be ejected by an ex pro propelled out of the womb by a puff of air, cry turned upside down to begin the whole cycle all over again. And why? Pum sam sri amituni bhavmayata tayo mitori dikani. Anyway, no Sutta Goswami doesn't cut it as far as the standards of the fruit of workers are concerned. And he's obviously a, a brilliant intellect. Nice Dika Brahmachari, perhaps, who remembers verbatim everything they hear about spiritual subjects. He's just heard Sukadeva Goswami, speak 18,000 verses of the Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parikshit. He hasn't taken any notes. 
He didn't have voice memo. Uh, he didn't have Siri. He's got it all in here, memorized verbatim. And now he's going to repeat it with his own realization sort of woven in there to the sages at Namish Haranya. He's not lacking in terms of memory and ability and spiritual affinity. But he doesn't know certain portions of the Vedas. So the Vedic scholars would look askance at him. Well, you don't, you're not familiar with this esoteric part of the Rig Veda, the Atarva Veda. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess you have some more work to do before you come up to my level. So all this is acknowledged in this very short verse, four line verse by Seneca Rishi. All this is acknowledged. But the point is, it's more than compensated for by his bhakti. In fact, we don't need any fruitive activities in our lives. We don't need any mental speculation. Our goal, in fact, is anya bilasita sanyam, gyana karma dina ano krishnana krishna bhaktir uttama. Our goal is to be free of the downward pull of gravity of material influences of the body and the mind and to break free of the material atmosphere into the unlimited spiritual world of Vaikuntha. And the thrust which gets us up and out of that is our devotion, not our knowledge, not our uh, ability to earn money or get our name in the paper or uh, be the patriarch of an ever-increasing, ever-expanding dynasty of children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and all like that. Now, why is Bhakti the queen? Why is Bhakti the queen? It's like the queen of England sitting on her throne with the flag. We want the queen of Bhakti to be sitting alongside the Lord in our heart on her own throne. What is that verse? Tibya Vinindranya Kalpa Drumada Shri Madhratna Gana Shri Mashana Shri 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 Radha Shri Govinda Prasthalabi Sayavirani Shmarami. I want to Shmaram. I want to capture and preserve the impression of Sri Sri Radha Sri Govinda Deva, Sri Sri Radha Govinda sitting in the transcendental land of Vrindavan underneath a Kalpa Riksha desire wish fulfilling tree on a throne made of jewels. The roots of that tree are full of all kinds of valuable stems and uh, gems and, and stones being worshipped by their loving eternal associates. That is my meditation. That's what I want to capture within the core of my heart. <clears throat> Imagine if you knock on someone's door, they open the door and you say, you have to let me in. You have to make me your friend because I'm good looking, because I know the scriptures, because I'm a good person, because I volunteer at the old age home, because I go when it's green and I stop when it's red, because I have a perfect record. Is any of that going to impress you? Oh, yeah, well, if that's the case, come on in. Share my space with me. You know, hang out with me. Affect my consciousness, yada, 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 yada. Now, none of those are going to impress the resident of the house. He's not impressed by your, your attendance record. He's not impressed by your grades in school. He's not impressed by your uh, aristocratic birth. He's not impressed by your bank account. In fact, if you if you try to uh, push your way into his home, push your way into his circle of friends, citing material qualifications, he's probably going to push back. He's probably going to push back. You cannot force your way into anybody's circle of friends. You cannot force anyone to have affection for you. What's the only tried and sure way? of winning someone's affection and allowing them into their inner circle of friends. The only way is you first have to be devoted to them. If you show up at someone's door and they recognize you, they know you have a history of serving them, of celebrating them, of supporting them through thick and thin, you may be not the brightest bulb in the room. You may not be the biggest scholar. You may not have PhD, MAD, LSD after your name. You may, you may not have the same income as him. You may not live in the same kind of house as him. You may, you, may, you may not have an unblemished police record. 
You may have made mistakes in your past. You may have a record. There may be so many things for which you could be criticized and looked down upon from certain segments of society. But if the resident of that house recognizes you and that you have a history of serving them and celebrating them and inspiring them, then they say, come on right in. Now, the goal of life is not to promote ourselves as a big scholar or have everyone uh, bow down or talk about us because we have the biggest house on the top of the hill with the largest number of children. We own the most land and we're the richest person in town. None of that impresses the Lord. He is Aishwarya Yasamagrasha, Bir Yasha Yasa, Yadam Vaya, Sadam Bhagami, Tingana, loyalty by Bobby says. That's what we're trying. Bhakya tu ananyaya sakya. Sakya means be a friend of the Lord. Befriend the Lord. Befriend him as a servant. That is the sure and tried way to win your way into the heart of the Lord. And how do we begin that service? Atasi Krishnamadi Nabavit Seva Mukhi Jibado Shayam Evash Pradyarham Prashant Paduma Narayan is on the job coming up with those quotes. Here's the most recent Atasi Krishnamadi Nabavit. Thank you very much for jumping up. You always take us to the next level, Paduma Narayan. Radhe Sham, thanks for joining us. Of course, I, Bobby, Devi, Dasi, Raleigh. It's jumped on in the meantime as well. Sanjay Sharma, Omkar, great lecture the other day, Omkar, thank you. Chaitanya Mangala, thank you for liking. Chaitanya Mangala always shares our talks in other groups and other forums for which we're so appreciative. So this verse, you know, we just can't put it in our rear view mirror because it's so essential to know that bhakti trumps jnana, bhakti trumps karma, bhakti trumps everything. Bhakti is the queen. Just last night we had some wonderful young people at the Sunday feast. They were so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. There was one boy who was wearing a black shirt and a bow tie. He was kind of all blondish. And he had three girls. They looked like they might have been sister. And you could see they were very close. And they had so many questions. One of the initial questions is, okay, we 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 got it that the darkish figure playing his feud is Krishna, but who's the girl besides Krishna? And I said, I'm glad you asked that. That's the one we really worship. You know, we don't have access to Krishna. <laughs> She's too exalted, too sublime, too elevated, too pure. She is Radha Rani. Radha means Worship and Rani means queen. She is the topmost servant of the Lord. She is the first expansion. The Lord is one and he becomes two in the form of Radha. Radha absorbs, submerges herself in service of Krishna. Radha thinks of none other than Krishna. And then the two have become one. One becomes two. Two becomes one. And we worship. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I'm not a Brahmin, I'm not a Sudha, I'm not a Vaisha, I'm not a man. I am the eternal Dasana, 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 Dasana. I'm the eternal, devoted, sold out. It's like we have our collars here. The dog can look at his collar, read the little tag. To whom he has to be returned. If found, given back to this person. He belongs to this person. So here it is. I am, if, if lost, please return me. Please find the nearest temple and dump me at the doorstep if you find me wandering, amnesiac, with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, with without some of my essential clothes on, wandering in the street. But please just give me a ride back to the doorstep of the nearest Hare Krishna temple because I belong to Krishna. I'm like Krishna's dog. This is my dog <laughs> that's the that's the pin code that's the entrance key that's how you get back to home back to god and you solve your birth problem your death problem your disease problem your old age problem <clears throat> uh, hunger thirst 
honor, dishonor, hot, cold, happiness, distress. Ito vesha shimutin and dranvenai, samaham sarut sargi yanti parantapa, being freed from duality and delusion, being fixed in my lotus feet, yesham tu anti gatam papam, jnana punya karmano. Those who have accumulated pious activities, those who who've done mental speculation, done fruit of activity for thousands and thousands of births, and they've done it without committing sinful activities, without having committed offenses at your lotus feet, they who have taken vows that I will not stop, I will not cease, desist, I will not retreat until, unless and until I attain the lotus feet of the Lord. Until I find, re relocate myself as an atom at the lotus feet of Krishna, I will not retreat. This is Drita Rataha. This is the bound determination to achieve the lotus feet of Krishna no matter what. And we achieve it through no other process than service. Devotees are decorated with knowledge. They're cap perfectly capable of functioning within, within the world, of, uh, generating income, buildings, land, vehicles, resources for Krishna. They're perfectly capable of that, but their focus is on service, is on devotion. My own case, I was a child of the 60s. There were so many protests in those days, protests against the war in Vietnam. I actually turned in my draft card in 1967. I sent it to the head of the Selective Service, who at that time was named General Hershey, uh, indicating that I would not go when I was in college, I had a sit-down protest. I participated in a sit-down protest while the ROTC was training. No offense to the ROTC, ROTC, great, great bunch of people, a, a wonderful, uh, you can only but appreciate their willing to sacrifice themselves for the peace and security of the country. But our issue was with the leaders who sent people halfway around the world for our security. What did Vietnam have to do with the security of America? So I participated in a sit-down protest. We had signs, hell no, I won't go. I went to the Pentagon where there was a massive anti-war demonstration, 100,000 people. I got arrested there, bused to some detention facility in Virginia, released the same day. After which I left the country and I was gone for eight years from 77 to uh, no, 67 to 75. So this was a time of, of protests of unrest, and I had a lot of adventures. I lived on the beach in the Canary Islands. I lived and worked in the copper mines in Elat on the Red Sea in the southern part of Israel. I worked for a year in a kibbutz in Israel, picking avocados, picking apples, and mostly working, uh, getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning, milking the sheep, and then taking them out to the pasture, herding sheep in Israel. So romantic, Cheru, younger Cheru such a romanticist. I went overland to India in 1969. And in all of that, in all of the travels from 77 to um, 67 to 70, I never had more than $100 in my pocket. I only earned whatever I needed. I worked in the copper mines in Israel. I worked in uh, Thailand selling vitamin pills. I worked uh, picking tomatoes in the Canary Islands. I tutored uh, English in France and Greece. I never had more than $100 in my pocket because I just didn't see the need for acquisitiveness, for working hard for temporary fruits or pieces of paper. I came to Australia. I actually visited India. Uh, I learned, earned some more money on Thailand, and then I, I needed to get a decent amount of money. And we're talking, you know, maybe $1,000 or something. So I went to Australia cynically. I didn't expect there to be anything of culture religious or spiritual significance to be found in Australia. And imagine my surprise when I was being spewed out of the subway one day. I was working as a brickies laborer in North Sydney. We we're building this office building. And I'm being spewed out of the subway on Winyard Station, downtown George Street in Sydney one winter evening. And it's the financial district. So all the men in the gray flannel suits are coming and going. The buildings are gray. It was an overcast gray gray. It was evening. Uh, and a flash of color caught my eye. I looked to my right, and there was Upendra, a newly arrived Hare Krishna devotee from San Francisco. 
So I started asking questions and that was the beginning of my journey back to home, back to God, and back to the lotus feet of Prabhupada and back to the lotus feet of Krishna. <laughs> so in all that time, I never had more than $100 in my pocket. And granted, I had gone to Australia to earn a little bit more than that, but I did not see the value in working hard and earning money. Can I tell you that from that moment when I met Upendra on the streets of Australia, one thing led to another, and I can't even begin to tell you how many tens of millions of dollars I've generated since becoming a devotee. And in fact, I was more materially acquisitive, more materially contaminated when I was traveling on the world without devotional service with a hundred dollars under my pocket that I was earning tens of millions of dollars, none of which was for my own personal sense and joy. It was all for the service of the Lord. For the sake of the service of the Lord, we don't give up material activities. We don't give up earning money. We don't give up building buildings. We don't give up festivals. We don't give up radio stations. We don't give up credit or debit cards. We don't give up vehicles. We give up, read my lips, the selfish use of them. Everything comes from God. God is the owner, the proprietor, the enjoyer. Bhaktaram yaga tapisham sarvaloka suridam sarvam gatva mam santim richati. He is the creator, he is the proprietor, and therefore he is the rightful enjoyer. So we do not aspire to enjoy anything unless and until it is first tendered at the lotus feet of Krishna. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever austerities you perform, whatever you give away, Krishna says, do them as an offering for me. So for myself, for the altar of Churu, who was Krishna at that time, I didn't see any motivation to work any harder than I needed to have $100 in my pocket. That's all I needed to get my next visa, to cross my next border, to live somewhere on the beach, to eat simply. To maybe pick up a job when my funds got low for five. I was working in uh, Elat, in the southern part of Israel, in the Red Sea. And uh, I was living on the beach. I had a little cavity with some boards over it. I, I slept right on one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. There was another community of young people like myself. I had no overhead, no rent. So I would catch the bus at seven o'clock in the morning out to the copper mines. I would work for eight hours. They had a nice cafeteria. They had a lunch there. You get a nice salad. You get yogurt, and all kinds of beautiful things to eat. And that was my main meal of the day. And I worked a four-hour shift in the morning. And then I worked a four-hour shift in the afternoon. After I'd been there a couple of weeks, they noted that I was a pretty good worker. So they gave me this special job of cleaning out this big cylinder, which was somewhere they're processing the chemicals, and it would get all gucked up. And so you'd get credit for four hours of work. If you unscrew the bolts with a piece of equipment and opened it up and then you had to step back because there were all these sulfurous fumes and it was all green and yellow and you had to take some brushes and all clean it out. It took about an hour and I get credit for four hours work. So normally you get $10 a day and you get a meal, a nice meal at lunch. So I was getting double and then I was able to get credit for more than eight hours of work. So I was making about 20 bucks a day and this is in 1969. I had no uh, expenses for food. I had no rent to pay. And, 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 it, and I, you know, I, it was just for me, just for the maintenance of the body. That was all I needed. Just a very simple life. Uh, uh, it was, I couldn't see any reason why I would have to work harder to put a lot of money in my bank account. I just need enough money so I could go back and travel for some period of time. But once I became Krishna conscious, then I wanted to earn all the money in the world to lay at the lotus feet of Krishna. I wanted all the buildings of the world to dedicate to Krishna consciousness, all the office buildings, all the uh, temples and places of worship, all the residential houses to house the devotees. I wanted all the means of transportation so that we could go 
here and there, crisscrossing the world in the service of the Lord. I wanted all the raw resources, the minerals, the oils, the jewels, everything to lay at the lotus feet of Krishna. Why? He is the supreme enjoyer. Sarvaloka Maheshram. He owns everything. He's the proprietor. Suridam Sarvabhutanam Gatva Mam Santimrichati. Because if everybody were God centered, if everyone truly realized and worked as sons and daughters of the Supreme Personality of Godhead for his satisfaction, that would be the peace form that God would favor us, He would bless us, He would smile upon us, we would prosper. When Krishna's lotus feet touched the planet 5,000 years ago, the earth was non different from the kingdom of God. The trees were kalva riksha, the trees were desire trees, the cows were watering the fields with their milk, and their calves were happy. It was just like the spiritual world. And similarly, we could also uh, transform our consciousness from meanness. To heinous Krishna consciousness. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Otherwise, by mental speculation, by fruit of activity, by yoga, you name it, the Lord remains. He receives beyond the powers of our senses to perceive Him. But when you engage in devotional service to please Him, under the training of a bona fide spiritual master, Krishna begins to reveal himself. He shows up and he shows out in your life in amazing ways. Otherwise, don't put your hopes in any other process. In the 10th chapter, 2nd verse, Krishna declares to Arjuna, May be do saragana, Prabhava Maharishana, Mahamadiri Devana, Maharishana, Kasarvasha, neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages. Okay, just listen. Let's open our ears. Neither the host of demigods, Prabhupada once said, that if it took you a thousand births, you could not understand even the least significant of the demigods who lived for hundreds of thousands of years in the higher planets. So if, if after a hundred thousand births, we couldn't even understand demigods who have a higher position in this material world, how in the world are you going to understand Krishna from whom millions and millions and millions? In this universe alone, 33 million demigods emanate from the transcendental body of Vishnu, who is a portion of a portion of a portion of Krishna. Excuse me, I have to take some of my wife's licorice tea now. It says here, neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages. Brahma, Shiva, Chandra, Indra, Kuvera. Lakshmi Nishini has just come in, just in time for Kirtan. Neither the host of demigods nor the great sages know my origin or opulences, for in every respect I am the source of the demigods and the sages. And Prabhupada in that purport says, one cannot understand Krishna unless one is graced by the supreme personality of Godhead, only one who has surrendered to a pure devotee of Krishna and taken the dust of his lotus feet can understand Krishna. Nesha Matish Tavad Urkurangam. Urkurangam means the heroic, the incomparable, <laughs> superlative, the one, the only supreme personality of God from whom all qualities come. He says you have to take the dust of the lotus feet of his devotees on your head before you can understand him by his mercy. And what was our last class last week about? How the Lord glorifies his devotees. Let me remind you of one verse which was issued from the mouth of the Lord. The Lord said to the Four Kumaras, I am so sorry that Jai and Bijai have offended you. The devotees are sacrosanct. Devotees are untouchable. He said, even if I myself were to offend one of my devotees, 
I would not hesitate to punish myself. Tindam shabahu. Bahu means arm. Tindam means cut. Krishna says, if my arm were to offend one of my devotees, he says, I would not hesitate to cut off my own arm. When the Lord makes these kinds of radical statements about his devotees, do we dare to do anything other than take the devotees as our life and soul, take the dust of their lotus feet on our heads and pray to them for enlightenment and devotional service? Thanks for joining us, Lakshmi. Have you been listening? Do you have anything to add to our stream of consciousness this morning? Three, two, um, I don't know whether you're cooking or just coming from some other activity. I'm just coming from some other activity. I was homeschooling <laughs> and we finished. So I thought I'd jump on and get some of your nectar, the nectar that's flowing from your lips. And then if you would like to do a little kirtan at the end, it's up to you. We're at, we're almost at the end, another just a few minutes. So if you want to grab, hey, do you have that string instrument? You want to do one of those kinds of kirtan? Stories? Sure, I have it right here. Lakshmi has a special. What time in Utah time do you do your kirtan every day? When is that in Utah? I always usually catch it later in the day, and it's, uh, you know, it's not live anymore. Well, I think what you're three hours behind us right now. It's uh, something like eleven eleven. So you're what at eight eleven? Yeah, it's eight eleven. So three so, hours. So you do your kirtan at what time? Puerto Rican time. Seven thirty a.m. <laughs> So that oh my gosh that would be uh that would be quite early <laughs> yeah but anyway it's on your facebook page you can go to lakshmi Shrine's facebook page it just won't be live that's only right yeah so let me just finish up with this last verse here sure. a few sure. words of Prabhupada's purport the whole key to successful life is in devoting yourself and finding a bona fide spiritual master under uh, whose shelter you can serve the lord and this is so clearly indicated in this key verse from the seventh chapter, 14th verse of the Bhagavad Gita. This divine energy, Devi Hiyashagunami, why is it that we get distracted? Why is it that we want to pluck the fruits of this material world and enjoy them for ourselves? Why is it that we want to exercise the mind gymnastically to try and understand all the permutations and combinations of this material world. Why such allure? Why such fascination? The answer is right here. Devi Isha Gunamayi. It is the divine energy of the Lord. Even though it's matter and it's an inferior energy, nevertheless, because it comes from the all-powerful, all-brilliant, all-luminous, all-attractive Lord, his energy is also cannot but be attractive. And so we're like, oh yeah. Wow, cool man. <laughs> but the Lord is, he, he doesn't want to leave us mucking around, selfishly trying to exploit his energies as if they were ours. He wants to wake us up. Budilo Arano Purana Bhaji, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda, whose appearance they were going to celebrate on Wednesday, they came specifically to wake us up from our hypnotizing, being hypnotized by the workings of the material energy and to say, hey guys, you know, wherever there's energy, there's always an energetic source. So why don't you pry your eyes and your mouth and your nose and your tongue off of the palate of this material world, purify your senses so that you can eventually focus on my lotus feet, get my mercy, and come back to home, back to God. Without the mercy of the Lord, no one can extract themselves. No one can wean themselves from the material energy. And when we use the word wean, it indicates that we're like a baby. We're, 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 <laughs> we're sucking that tit. You know, we've got it and we're holding on to that tit for all we can. For, nobody's going to take us away from this teat. But what is it? Who is the teat belong to? It belongs to Maya. You're sitting on the lap of the witch called Maya. And for all the effort and all the attachment and all the strength which you're clinging to the teat of Maya, she gives you nothing back. Nothing but birth, death, disease, and old age. The Krishna is saying, don't 
lie on the lap of the witch called Maya Bukti Yukti Siddhi Kami Sakali Ashata, engage in the pure devotional service. I am your best well-wishing friend. I am the owner. I'm the proprietor. I'm the uh, beneficiary of all sacrifices. If you simply leave off your attachment to my indirect energies, if you simply look elsewhere for consolation, for salvation, for direction, for illumination, for joy and peace, then on the lap of the witch Maya, I will be there. I will show up and show out for you. And having surrendered unto me, I will order Maya to let you go. I will order Maya to release her grasp on you, to release you from birth, death, disease, and old age, and deliver you to my lotus feet, where from there you can go back to home, back to Godhead, and sing and dance and enjoy life with me eternally. Whew. So guess what? I believe we got to come back to this verse tomorrow because we, <laughs> we, we're just like lots of yeah. I mean, uh, sure. I, I mean, a bee recognizes that there's lots of other flowers. There's eighteen other eighteen thousand other flowers in the Sri Bhagavatam. But I mean, uh, as long as there's still nectar in this one flower, why why should you leave it and go to another one? So tomorrow will be our seventh session on this verse. <laughs> And then, as I mentioned uh, to some of you who might have come, uh, I, as I mentioned to the early comers, but you may not have heard me, is that uh, Tuesday after the class tomorrow, I'm going to jump in the car and go up to Hoops Vision in Salt Lake City. I'm going to have my left eye uh, cataract surgery. Never had cataract surgery, so I don't know what I'm going to be like on Wednesday. From what I've heard, it's no big deal. Um, but I will be spending the night in Salt Lake because I have a follow-up appointment. With the doctor on uh, on Wednesday, and that's Nityananda Triodisi. So uh, I don't want to make promises I can't keep. I will try from my laptop in Salt Lake City to start a Zoom call at the same time. But should I not do it, it's just because there's some side effects from the surgery, or maybe a, you know some technical problems with the computer. So I'll try. But in any case, whether we're together or not, note it on your calendar. Wednesday is Nityananda on the Trodicy. and there's so many wonderful programs. My gosh, the GBC Steering Committee has put together a number of programs. Whether I make my own time slot or not, I'm, you can count on the fact that I'm going to be spending a good part of the day hearing from Radha Swami, hearing from Armarendra, hearing from Chaitanya Chaitanya, and all these, the, all the nectar coming from the lips of the pure devotees about the glories of the original spiritual master, Lord Nityananda. Rob, a word from you before we go to our closing kirtan. Oh, you still, Rob, incidentally, for those of you who don't know, he has his two year old, soon to be two year old boy with him until Tuesday. So he's really busy in a very happy, fulfilling, paternal way. Um, but the boy, literally, we were on a Zoom call Sunday, yesterday, and we asked for Rob, you know, to, you know, tune in and say something. And he couldn't, he, he said uh, in the chat section, he said, sorry, I'm tied up. And we thought, well, we hope that you're not literally tied up by your two-year-old son. <laughs> he said, no, I'm just busy. So if Rob doesn't come to give us a wrap as he usually does a wrap up, it's because he might figuratively at least, or perhaps even literally be tied up by his two-year-old son with whom he's joining, enjoying a paternal <laughs> visitation. Okay, Rob, well, after Tuesday, He'll probably be more free. Yes. So thanks for jumping on. Yes, Rob, a word. Thank yes. you for having me. No um, uh, thankfully, his knots are not uh, too good yet. So any tying up he does, I should be able to get free. <laughs> um, That'll come when he's five or six. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm good with my knots, so I'll be sure to teach him. Um, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity to to act in the position of being his father in this existence. But um, my what stood out to me today um, the most was the renouncing material wealth as opposed to using your material resources in a Krishna conscious way and to improve um, your connection with Krishna and your service to him. Um, 
that uh, that's definitely a concept that is much easier for me to wrap my head around than renouncing everything and, and giving, you know, getting rid of everything and trying to be disassociated completely from it. Um, but utilizing those as a tool to improve my own devotion and service to Krishna is a, is a much more graspable concept to me. Um, and so I, I really appreciated that statement and hope that I can apply that to my life in a much more Krishna conscious way. And there's so much joy in spending money for Krishna. There's just so much joy. It's almost like the more you can spend, the more his resources you can reclaim from the materialists and the more ground you can take for the kingdom, the more joy and satisfaction and bliss uh, wells up in your heart. You know, I, I'm, I'm an, an addict, you know. Some, some people think of me more as a, a businessman than a saint or people that ask for initiation. I, I kind of say, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of like into management, you know. I like, I like to gather I like to I like to reclaim resources, buildings, temples, radio stations, land, vehicles. I like that. You know, it gives me a, a lot of pleasure to use whatever managerial or executive abilities I have to reclaim as much of Christian's property as possible. It gives me more pleasure to buy something for Krishna than it would for me to drive around in a big car or to have a nice apartment. And so it's 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 kind of a cycle that once you get into it, it self perpetuates. You become an addict for reclaiming things in the name of the Lord. And I think I I sense from your words you're also getting into that as well. <laughs> I I don't know if you you quoted um, the verse by Rupa Goswami. Your Banda Krishna Samade Yukta Rai Garu today. Okay. Is that it? Uh, let me see. Anasaktasya Vishayam. Yep, Anasaktasya Vishayam Yataram Vitan. Your Banda Krishna Samade Yukta Rai Garu today. Yeah, that's, that's, the that's that a great, <laughs> that's a great verse to um, highlight the point that you're making. You know, using, not, not, you know, I, I think it was, um, if I remember correctly, uh, Prabhupada would say that the impersonalists, when things were offered to them, they would go like this. But for a Vaishnav, they would hold out two hands <laughs> because we are collecting for Krishna, not for ourselves. You know, just like you, you built a one, you could have built a nice home for yourself, but instead you build a home for Krishna. I drive a Subaru. I got it. I got it. It was a 2010 Subaru with 20,000 miles on it. I got it for $12,000 like six years ago. It had been restored. It had been in a wreck. And so on the, on the title, it says, you know, it's been in a wreck and it, you have yeah. to take it as it is and all like that. You know, I, I could be driving, you know, I could have a whole, I could have Rolls Royces. I could have BMWs. You know, I could have mansions on the hill. But I have no interest. It's like, the you know it's like garbage it's like garbage in the street and i'm not a pure devotee by any means but i've just latched onto this principle that nothing should be rejected in the service of the lord it's a driving motivating force that generates lots of nectar and bliss and satisfaction and if i were to bless anybody with managerial skills i would bless them to get on fire for claiming reclaiming as much of the resources of Krishna's world back in the service of he who created it. Haribo. Haribo. <laughs> Let us all become Krishna-holics. <laughs> Jai Shri Rad. That is the only addiction that will give us real and unending happiness. And Jai Shri Radhi says, I love shopping for Krishna. There you go. There you ladies. Today's was a word to the wise, isn't it? You can shop till you drop, but just make sure it's for Krishna. Jewelry, yeah. clothes, fabrics, flowers for the glorification and beautification of the Lord. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your comments, Jaisi Rade. Just check out the comment section on Facebook. She's right on. A lot of really, really good comments. I can only see four because the rest have dropped down. 
So please, Lakshmi, the bliss, the names of Krishna, like honey into our ears, if you will, kind sir. I will. Okay, here's the ektar. It's a nice, uh, sweet melody for the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, 
Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Boy, not only does Lakshmi sing like a Gandharva, but so much uh, feeling, so much realization. I was getting goosebumps, and my hair was starting to stand on end. What a wonderful way to end our, <coughs> our classes here. We're so lucky that you jump on with us. Thank you very much. I, I thank you. I hope all of our listeners were hitting, you know, thumbs up and hearts during that kirtan. And amongst those who have hit a like at some point during our show, we'd like to thank Jean Eskelson, very faithful listener, Jean, as well as Rupa Manjari. I don't think she's missed a day in the last six months. Propanat Gopal, a frequent jopper inner. Thank you, Propanat. Chris, Chris came to do volunteer work January 28th in 2020. He celebrated his one year anniversary just recently. And so he's one year and, and more adding up to all of his transcendental Krishna conscious credits. Chris, we couldn't do what we do without you. Thank you. Ram Kishore Das. I think you should befriend Ram Kishore Das on his Facebook page. This guy has lived an amazing, interesting life as a cook, as a guide, as a mountain climber, 
as someone who was out of Krishna consciousness for 23 years and then came back and earned shelter at the lotus feet of Radha Swami, Ram Kishore Ki Jai. Arivo. Jimmy and Taruni from Minnesota. Not only do they listen every time, but they send me <laughs> things like lip gloss, little <laughs> gifts, donations. They're they're the best. They're the best. They're I had good. I had a, the good fortune of talking to Jimmy. Oh, uh, yeah? The, uh, yeah, we texted each other. Nice, nice. Yeah, and now we have this little community. Feel free to intercommunicate within each other. Send each Thank other. Thank you. Message. Yeah, join friends. Let's get a let's get as tightly knit as we can. Prince among men, Govinda Dev. Just, I mean, oh my gosh, uh, one of our jewels here in Utah. I couldn't, I can't start with Govinda Dev because I'd never end. Justin, thank you, Justin. Justin is also one of our Nitya Seva monthly donating members. He has so much enthusiastic as has him. He's in Michigan. He's an engineer there. Raleigh with his wife. Have, are doing so wonderful service here, Krishna Conscious. It's just a delight to be able to serve side by side and shoulder to shoulder. Chaitanya Mangala always shares our talks in various forums and various groups. Thank you for that. Unkar is becoming one of our premier communicators up there in Salt Lake City. We've got him in the system of rotation for giving Saturday evening talks, and he always does a great job. And he's the personification of humility and graciousness when people visit the temple. Sanjay used to be in Utah, he's moved out of state, but we still keep in touch and we're so grateful for that. Rade Sham translates Prabhupada's books into Kazakhstan. He's a translator ah. from there. Uh, he lives in Tuwila right now in Utah and he never, very rarely misses one of our things. Subhadra Rampur is becoming more and more of a attendee. She jumped in on one or two of our Zoom calls also on Saturday morning. Back to Gary from Northern California. He keeps asking me, what can I do for the Utah congregation? What can I do for the remotely from where I am? He's also, I think, an aspiring disciple of Giraj Swami. Jai Sri Radha. She, she puts like 80% of the comments today. Give yourself a treat and read some of her comments. They are spot on. Shama Dasi. We have 276 mutual friends, so there must be a lot in common between us. And our scribe, our pundit, Pradumna Narayan, Prashant, coming through with all of the quotes and references that we can savor after the fact. Bhai Bobby, God, there's not, nothing you can say about Bhai Bobby, just a colossus. She, 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 she covers the earth and the oceans with her. Uh, her talents and her abilities. And I've been married to her for almost 50 years. And William Griffith, what an amazing guy. William and Allie, even though they had set aside this past weekend as time for each other, kind of like a late light honeymoon, he still listened to several of our talks and even called me during the Sunday feast last night to gush over with enthusiasm for Krishna Kata. So thanks to all of you who I just listed and named for liking. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for sharing. We'll answer each and every one of your comments in due course of time. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow for Transcendental Tuesday. I hope Lakshman can join us, although I know it's his cooking day. Still, if you can fit us in some way, shape, or form. We never yeah, I, I, think, I think I'm trading with my wife. Uh, um, I think she's cooking. Are you cooking tomorrow? I'm Can trading with my hello? wife. So. Come and say hello. Can she give us a wave? Sure. She's this also Kazakh. This is a doctor. She's Kazakh she's also, also. She's also from Kazakhstan, right? Yeah, she's Kazakh. Uh huh. Yeah, she's right here. Wow. Radhe Sham, check this out. This is one of your compatriots. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is uh, Dr. Dr. Puglisi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just humble servant of Krishna. And this is my son. This is. Hi. What's his name? Haribo. Haribo. Nara Shringadev. Oh my gosh, Nara Shringadev. Wow, he looks powerful too. He is. He doesn't he look like someone you want to cross. Seems like he's he, your best friend. Or he speaks four languages. Oh my gosh. Russian, Kazakh, 
English and Spanish. I'm learning Sanskrit. And now we got him on a Sanskrit uh, regimen. He's learning Sanskrit. Sounds like with four under his belt, a fifth would be no problem. <laughs> yeah, he, he's very language oriented. All right, he wants me to tell you he's an artist too. Oh, we'll, we'll have to next time show us some of your works there in the Das. And the family is uh, looking for a, a position, a residency, so that uh, Dr. Pugliese, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, that's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Finish her residency. So Govinda Dot has her curricula vita at working in Utah for us. And uh, Ras Vilas, both of them have uh, your wife's curricula vita and they're making inquiries to see if that might be a possibility of also applied for the BA hospital in Logan. So yeah. we can only pray whatever Krishna's will, it will be done. That's for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, to all the assembled devotees. We offer our humble obeisances, your desire trees, you can fulfill the desires of everyone, and your full of compassion in the following conditioned souls.